Hey, welcome back. This is the fourth video of my Ultimate Ladybug course. As I said before, Ladybug is a component or the core component of the Ladybug tools. In the first video, we looked into how we can get data. Uh, in the second video, we looked at how we can modify the data so it fits our project. And in the last video, we looked into how we can use the data and how can we prepare it to analyze it. And this is, and there's nothing more to say, and we continue at that point. Just a very quick recap of the situation where we are. I cleaned up the file a bit. I also added here the bifocals so you can see the name. I like the symbols, but so it also shows the name of the tool. And what I did here, I I grouped things together so it makes it makes it more visually more structured. So we 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 know what we did, what what kind of components work together and how they are linked. So this was in the first video. In the first video, we just retrieved data, weather data from the internet, from a weather station. And then we looked into how can we modify it? How can we modify the data so it fits our project? Uh, and for that, we, first of all, we constructed a new location, the lo new location with coordinates of the new, of our project with a new elevation, uh, the name, of the location and then we actually only um, modified the dry pulp temperature and the dew point temperature and also the barometric pressure and we basically deconstructed the data for that we modified the data and then we put everything together and in the last video i also showed how we can create our own header so the data we are producing has a header which correlates with the actual new location so that was important i haven't done this for every modification we will do that uh, further down the line when we add more improvement to this weather data with this we we write our new weather e plus weather object into a file on my computer and from there we again we retrieve the weather data to to analyze it and then in the last video we compared in the last videos we compared the original weather data in kigali with the the one we modified and it's a bit cooler because it's further up it's the elevation is 1800 meters so it's around 400 meters higher that's why we uh, for it, for the temperature we subtract four degrees so that's so just to get a rough idea on how the weather could be there or the temperature could be there and yeah that's how far we got really so when we look into the sections here we covered basically what what's in here in the import section pretty much everything whatever we haven't touched on we will do further down the line when we need it and now we're here in analyze data and we covered basically the first 10 objects until here ladybug time interval operations very importantly this is these are basics you will need in pretty much every honeybee ladybug dragonfly script so don't miss don't miss it there are also some tools which I haven't never touched. For example, what we're gonna look at today is the ladybug degree days. All right, what is the ladybug degree days? If we open this tool, we can see, if we hover over it, we can see it says here, calculate heating and cooling degree days from outdoor dry pulp temperature. A degree days is a method of understanding cooling and heating demands. I will not go too much into detail I still need to learn a bit more about the, the loads of different uh, applications. It seems like it's a quite powerful tool, but I think we need to see it in action in further down the line. What I'm just doing here now is to show you how we put it together and what's the output. And then later we can uh, maybe use that in later videos. Also, there are loads of, um, so if you need, if you need this tool, there are a lot of explanation and texts and YouTube videos about how to use it, what it is, and so on. Um, for me, again, very simple. It's about can we understand from the dry pot temperature, the outdoor temperature, how much cooling and heating we require for each period we analyze. Normally, it's, it's done annually, so you have a better understanding how, how much cooling or heating do you need. Yeah, let's. I will try to explain this tool as much as I can as I can we have the dry pulp temperature this is input we need here and that just by placing this here we already have um, a working 
tool. It's already calculated. Now we could, um, for a better understanding how that works or how it is calculated normally, is you, in order to know if I need to heat or how much I need to heat, I compare the average temperature with a base temperature. For example, um, here it says the, the heat base is the threshold on when you want to heat. So temperature an average temperature throughout the day which is lower than uh, the set heat base the difference between is my heat degree day day or days and i don't know why they choose this name i think it's it's just a not it's not a good name to name uh, a result it's a number which just accumulates the degrees or the difference between the base and the actual average temperature per day and then sums everything up for the whole period so for example i take on day one i take i have let's say 16 degree average temperature on the next day i have 14 degree average temperature that means if my heat base is 18 degree so i have two degrees on the first day and four degrees on the second in total it's going to be eight degree days as simple as that on how you're gonna actually use that number, that's a different story. That's something for uh, you checking it out online or if you already know how to use it, even better. And we might see how we can use that tool in future. And now I just show how we could uh, look at it and what, what are the different outputs here. What I realize it's slightly calculated, it's slightly different and that has a reason, I guess. It just makes it more uh, more precise. Let's, instead of like calculating the whole year, wait one second, heat base. So the heat base here, the default is 18 degrees. This is the US standard, but the heat base is not everywhere the same. Uh, the different countries use different heat base. Uh, the same for the cool base, cooling base, or threshold, I would say. This for me is like a threshold. The, the cool base works different. So here the, the default value is 23 degrees. As soon as it goes above that, you would want to cool. In very hot countries, this might be uh, further up. Again, this is debatable. I'm just explaining how the tool, and maybe it's easier instead of like looking at the whole year, let's look at one day, one specific day. We can use the the tool here we uh, we uh, introduced yesterday, Ladybug Apply Analysis Period. So that's the perfect use for this type for this tool. We take the data. The data goes in here. Um, now we need to apply a period. Let's just copy what we did in the previous video. The period we put in here, and let's just limit it to one day. I would say May May day day one hour is uh, midnight. Start hour is midnight, the end month is the same month, same day, and the end hour is uh, the hour from 11 p.m. to midnight. And minute, let's, so this we don't need. This is my analysis period. And let's just look into what we, what's the output here. Again, we need to have the deconstruct data first. So otherwise we don't know what's going on. Okay, I suppose we should have now 24, data entries with the degrees in Celsius. What this tool does, it's actually not calculating just the average and then calculates the difference between the heat base. It actually does it hourly because some hours have heating requirements and others don't. And they are actually in between heat base and the cool base. So it, this is in the optimum, in, in the zone where, enough, where you don't need cooling or you don't need heating. And that's why it's probably the most it's more specific and more exact than just calculating the average and then calculating the, the difference between the base and the average. So just for you to better understand, if I create an average here, this is 16.49 so or 16.5. The heat base is 18. So my degree day would be around 1.5 but because of on how this is calculated so it's this is basically using a slightly different approach on how it's actually calculated i'm not sure but i know that if i look at the hourly the hourly um, heat output here and the values then i can see that 
calculating the potential heating requirement for each hour and then sums it up. So if I use a mass addition, mass addition, and I place this in here, I get 2.07, which is exactly the same as this one. So again, what I understood uh, online is that the, the simple way of uh, calculating these degree days is by calculating the difference between the heat base and the um, average temperature of the that specific day. And then you accumulative add all the temperature of the period you're calculating. And that gives you, for this one day, it gives you two. So it uses a different formula for sure, because the average here would would result in a different output if I calculate just the difference. Yeah, there's no cool days here, cool degree days, because we never get above um, this uh, default Celsius. So for example, in, in a world where 21 degrees would be too hot, then uh, you would have some cool degree days. So there's some requirement, would be some requirement for cooling, just to also show you this. But yeah, we don't have, on that specific day, there's no cooling requirement because we are never above these 23 degrees. But yes, yeah, so this is this tool. We will look into it in future, hopefully, and see how we can use that. Um, very quickly, maybe, just uh, to summarize a bit. A degree day is a measure of heating or cooling. Total degree days from an appropriate starting date uh, used to plan the planting of crops. So it's not just about heating and cooling but also about uh, crops and management of pests and pest control. Uh, so it seems like it has a lo loads of applications. So yeah, I encourage you to just go through these and check it out. For sure, it's, it's very useful and I hope I can uh, show and use it in future. The, there's the black fly, there's another Application. In Canada, growing degree days are used in order to predict when mosquitoes and black flies emerge and vanish. So, certain temperature will cause uh, mosquitoes to appear, for example. It's quite interesting. So, there's a lot, loads of different applications. We actually haven't looked into growing degree days, so that's probably something to calculate out of the degree days. Anyway, there's more here if you want to check it out. Heat degree day a bit more um, explanation here on Wikipedia. Heating degree day is a measurement designed to quantify the demand for energy needed to heat the building. Uh, and you, here is explained that different countries have different base temperatures in Celsius or in Fahrenheit and so on and so on. There's loads to read. Actually, this small little tool doesn't really show this huge potential or the whole background of it. Um, but yeah, it's something to look out for. All right, uh, we, keep it, uh, we keep it a bit shorter this time. Next time we look into uh, wind speeds adjustment. Let's see if we can uh, figure out how that works. See you in the next uh, video. Ciao.